Here are seven quick watercolor tips that you can start doing and practicing today. Let's get started. Okay, the first tip is to use three colors instead of one whenever you can. In this case, I've used ultramarine blue, a alizarin crimson, and a burnt sienna. I used those three colors and I made those dabs on the upper left hand cheat sheet or dab sheet. And I'm using those three colors to fill in the glasses. You can see they've blended together to make a purple or a violet in some places. But what you can't see, but you can when you're close to the painting, is there are times when I tip that color to be more blue, or I tip it to be more red, or I'll tip it to be more brown. So I am using those three colors as a triad to fill in this dark shape. And it allows for more variety and allows those wet colors to come together. I'm not blending them. I didn't, they're on my palette as those three colors. It isn't until I apply them onto the surface that they go near each other and create that dark shape that becomes the glasses. There you can see there's, there was a little bit more red for one moment and then I tipped it back to being a little bit more blue. The point is anytime you can use three colors to accomplish what one color would do, you'll have more variety in your painting. And this is called triad work. And this is a typical dark triad for me. Instead of buying or using a tube of brown or, or trying to match to the photograph, what I'm matching is to the value. The value of the shape of those glasses is a dark. And so when I use those three colors together, it can create a dark mass. And that's what I talk about when I talk about when, my, um, when I sign out. When I say mass for value, I know my value is dark, and then mix for color. I'm using those three colors. All right, the next tip is to paint in the direction of the object. It really helps if to create form if you move your brush in the direction that the object is made. So you'll see, I can I will make a curve where there's a curve, and I use the brush to do that. I'll use a straight stroke when there's a straight mass to fill in. All right, the next tip I've really slowed down to show. What I did was I took, again, three colors. I put an ultramarine blue, a um, permanent rose, and a Naples yellow together. And those are creating my gray, my dark gray inside that cat. Now you can't see it really closely, but those three colors are meeting and mingling together. You can almost see where they're, where they're doing it if you look really closely. That is my go-to for a gray. You can use any red, yellow, and blue, and you can create a neutral. Sometimes they lean toward gray, and sometimes they lean more toward gray, uh, uh, brown. In this case, I wanted a warm gray, and so those are relatively warm colors that I used because the cat is... Uh, warmer, <laughs> that gray is a warmer tone than the eyeglasses are, and I want that contrast. All right, the next tip is what I call um, value spots of color, or just being able to put color in a spot. This is cerulean blue, and I will start to see these sort of mid-toned spots uh, and what I tend to do is put a color spot of value in there. You see me putting it there on the cat's ears and then underneath its arm. This is next to neutral work. So if you have a neutral like I mixed with that gray and then you put a pungent color spot of value, that color spot of value will really stand out. What happens when you have color and only color and no neutrals is everything becomes color. But if you can neutralize things and then put a color spot of value in, it will really punch it up. And I like to do that. I often will see not the color cerulean. I don't see that blue specifically, but I'll see that exact value. And when I see it, then I'm going to put a color spot of value in. And that's what those dots are doing on that uh, card up on the left-hand side. I'm testing to see. Will that work? Is that the color value that I see? Again, I'm not matching to the photograph. I'm matching to how light or dark something is. So this is a color spot of value. Okay, the next qu quick tip is contact points. Every object will have contact with whatever it's on top of or what it's next to. And that's what's going in here. This is kind of slow work, um, and it usually comes from observation. It might not show really clearly in the photograph, 
but it's something that you learn over time. And it, again, adds and develops that three-dimensional form that you're trying to accomplish on a two-dimensional space. These are just something that I would advise to observe as you go through your regular day. What does it look like underneath the contact point of objects? How would you show that in a painting? Remember to dry as you go. I go as far as I can without having to stop to use the hair dryer, but I am working wet paint into wet paint. And in order to do that, sometimes I have to stop myself, even though I don't want to because it breaks the flow, and dry things. And the reason for doing that is I pretty much have one layer in at this point. And I know that paint always dries lighter than when you first apply it. And I'm doing this because I sort of want to clear the decks, get everything dry, and then decide what do I need to put a second coat on. So dry as you go. All right, this is an example of wet into wet. All I'm doing is taking the dry paper and I'm using three different blues to, to cover the real estate that's left here. I've used cerulean blue. This is probably a cobalt blue, so it's a little bit darker. And then I'm, we'll also put in an ultramarine blue. What I do is I have those three colors mixed and I'm using them on the paper, letting them get close to each other, cutting in. And you can see that although it appears later as if it's all one color, it's not. They're all blues, but I'm using three different blues to accomplish the task of filling in what looks like one color on that. Um, there's the ultramarine blue. See how dramatic that is? Mm, boy, it's lovely. It's so pretty. Love the way it flows. And using the flat brush really allows me to cut in nicely. I might have to put a second coat in, uh, but I'm not sure. If my brush is loaded enough, I'll, I can get away with just one coat. So this is an example of doing wet into wet. I'm using three colors. I, it's not triad work, although I'm using three colors. The technique is the same on the brush, but I'm not using three different colors. I'm not using a red, yellow, and a blue. I'm using three blues to accomplish this task. Here's the finished painting, and if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see the whole progression of the painting really uh, speeded up to, uh, to very fast. <laughs> But I wanted to show some of the techniques that I used. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.